Hello, uh, this is Jenkins Platform SIG meeting the 7th, 16, 2022. Today we have Mark Waite, Damien Dupontal and myself, Bruno Verstein. We have quite a big agenda today and that's the last meeting of the year 2022. In the open actions items, we have um, the platform support containers revisit and Damien, the floor is yours. Tell us more about Windows 2022 and Windows 2019. Okay, so Windows 2022, um, that's the, uh, let's say the new LTS uh, platform for Windows containers and virtual machines. Uh, the Jenkins infrastructure team is working on adding Windows 2022. Results are already promising. Um, the thing is we will have to maintain both at the same time because you cannot run a 2019 container on a 2022 machines and neither the other way around unless you use virtualized container which means an hyper-v process virtualized process for a container that works but that's quite complicated to run and it has a cost penalty so we will have to maintain both uh, architecture which some is not really an issue but that's why it took us some time it's not only it's not just replacing one by the other so so and considering the challenge there is windows container support worth our effort mm -hmm. i know that's a terrible question to ask Damien, but what <laughs> tell me your perception of it just because there are so many good things we've gained from from container support on linux really i love container support on linux it's great but container support on windows has just felt like one one challenge after another do you see it continuing to evolve is microsoft actively doing work to promote it or is it rather it's going to disappear like windows vista did someday so the windows container support is not going to disappear okay. uh, it's uh, clearly used uh, not as much as what we we have on the other platforms um, the question is really good for a Jenkins controller, and that's worth asking the community. Are there persons ah. running Jenkins controller inside Windows container? Because clearly we could benefit in maintenance at not maintaining a Windows controller. However, but, for the build agents, for sure it's required. And both okay, of and them are required. That's that's a that's a sweet spot, and that's a that for me is a helpful partitioning. If we were to actively plan to drop controller support for Windows containers, we we may reduce our burden and not dramatically affect Jenkins users. Whereas yep. agents, that 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 I I mean, okay, I know my world. I have one controller and fifty agents. Right, so so I'm much more likely to need a, a Windows agent than I am a Windows controller. Good, that makes sense. Thanks. Okay, but for sure we have persons complaining for both platforms, more for the agents. But we have people who noticed that uh, the Windows controller are 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 dead since uh, yeah, yeah a few well, months I... now, yeah. uh, but, but... and they build their own. That's the but thing. it took them a long time to notice that, and they and they took some work around themselves. Yes, but we have to be careful of the bias there, is that the persons were ready to face the challenge of running Jenkins controller inside a Docker Windows image. They know automation. So they are absolutely able to build their own custom image by forking our repository it's not an effort for them because they need that kind and that order of magnitude of efforts so the thing is that it's not because they don't complain that they don't exist that's the thing okay um, i'm not sure besides the download metrics from the docker hub that we could retrieve um, i'm not sure if there is a way for us to ask the community on different channels mm -hmm. i think yeah. asking the question is worth it's worth the effort, but I'm not sure which channel or set of channels, like having, a, I don't know, a, a QCM, a, a Google, uh, whatever form, Google form, I think that's the name, and mm -hmm. we can push. 
can say on different communication channel, hey, we need your advice if you're using uh, Jenkins with Windows. Well, but, but okay, so don't we, we, I think we may have some of that data, at least to, to print as, present a subset. One question that I believe the stat system could already answer is what fraction of controllers are running on Windows at all? Interesting. And, yep. and if we could answer that, and if we found that only 20% of controllers are running on Windows at all, uh, then it might say it therefore cannot be more than 20% that are running on a Windows container. And, and that may lobby, all right, therefore we may be able to justify non-support of Windows of controllers on Windows containers simply by the, the ratio of Linux of non-Windows to Windows controllers. Absolutely. But now I don't think we actually published that data anywhere that I've seen. And, and it may be that I'm wrong that the, the hosting platform may actually not be available in the data that's published that's sent by controllers back to uh, back to our statistics gatherer. Okay, I'm not sure where those statistics are exactly. Is it stats Jenkins IO with the plugin installations? Well, it's the statistics are actually shipped to a different location, and then Andrew Bayer runs okay. a reporting thing that updates stats.jenkins.io. So yeah, the collector is somewhere else, and the collector has has very intentionally limited access to the data that's collected because there's a fear that some of the data might inadvertently be 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 more sensitive and we wouldn't want to risk exposing the raw data to anyone okay um, yeah, but, yep go ahead sorry go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, it's just okay. I, I guess if we add the form everyone will answer yes we want it but i want <laughs> i want the second question to be but are you really sure you want to maintain it <laughs> just to right. see that uh, how we can correlate the yes to both questions um, right. My next question was about the statistics from Docker Hub. Would you be able to differentiate uh, the use, you know, the pools from the Jenkins infra from the pools for from elsewhere? You know, the real users, not ourselves. Yeah, uh, not right now easily. Uh, I don't know if the IPs are available. If the source IPs are, then yes, we can. Otherwise, uh, I won't, we won't be able. Not so sure about that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point. Um, let me think aloud. <laughs> no, we for the controller, that's sure it will be easy. We don't use Windows controller at all, so you're sure it's not us. Right, <laughs> that's a good thing. Right, and, uh, and and we have no we have no compelling reason to use Windows controllers. Right, why would we, we? Yeah. They're, they're just, I, I understand there are businesses that do. There are organizations that really have compelling reasons to use a Windows controller, but the Jenkins project does not. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yes, uh, for the statistics, so that because that's also the next topic, uh, following yeah. discussion mm -hmm. with Adrien Le Charpentier and then Jean-Marc Messon, um, it, see, it sounds like that there is a compelling topic for us to be able to store metrics that we could get, get that we could uh, consult and retrieve. So I think we, that's a generic we, uh, let's say the first person to experiment who should be able to help the other, to test how, how it sounds like Grafana could be used connected to a PostgreSQL database. Mm. Which means if we have a Prometheus on the PostgreSQL database, which access required authentication, but it's public data, which means anyone on the contributor could get an access on the infrastructure. We could have a kind of process where we use CSV. In my case, as a Docker Hub admin, once per month, I get the CSV export. I insert it in one of these two databases, and then we can get this information with mm. Grafana. Why Grafana? Because anyone can authenticate with the LDAP account and then create their own dashboard to try to see things based on the data. Um, that's the third compelling case in less than one month. One is the public met, uh, uh, plugins, public metrics for uh, trying to score them or see tendency. We have the, uh, Jean-Marc is working on a subject that Olivier Vernon and Kosuke back in time tried to also walk around these are the community numbers to see how much pull request issues help, this kind of metrics. 
And now we have the Docker hub metrics to justify whether we continue maintaining. All of these metrics are really valuable and could help us take decisions. So it sounds like there is an infrastructure topic for uh, 2023 on trying to build that kind of platform. Before that, on my side, specifically for the topic today, with the area of Christmas, if I'm a bit bored, I will try to get a CSV and see if I can put it on a Prometheus and Grafana database. So if it's that easy, then I could provide access easily. So anyone can take decision without only me being the best factor here. Good. So, so we've got one more data sample on your Grafana and database topic. Basil Crow created a tool that will read the Jenkins Update Center and convert it into an, a SQLite database. Oh. And so we've got an, and it, I tell you, it's impressive how easy it is to access Update Center when I can sit inside a SQL query statement and and do from where etc. Group by all the all of the things that SQL can do. It's so so that one is also another another example of the same kind of if if Grafana works well with SQL databases as a as a reporting dashboard then we might want to push update center into that same database as a you know separate set of tables etc yeah. and now we can do even more things in terms of what information do we already know about those those kinds of you know about all the plugins about jenkins core releases etc yeah. absolutely so that means i have two information to get from my my experiment except uh, justifying it because it's fun. If it works, it could be interesting to see uh, the, um, the how much requests do we have from Arc Linux and for the Windows platform for controllers right. and agents. Good. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a subject. It looks like it's important for lots of people. And that's really interesting. And I guess you'll be half time between the turkey and the cake at Christmas time, so that you will implement all of that in a hard bit. I always get I always get excuses to run away from the family during Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not only joking. Um, but yeah, uh, and for the rest of the tasks uh, that were in my action item, I didn't yeah. have time to run them, so we can jump. Uh, okay. To be done, not done. <laughs> Totally get it, of course. Uh, but we knew uh, before writing them down that uh, that's subjects that we will address. Um, we will talk about them each and every month. Not maybe we won't be able to address them, but yeah, that's okay. There were so many open action items. We can't do them all. Now, uh, JDK support for Jenkins. So we cryo Java 11 or new world for Jenkins core is progressing. We had, yeah, <laughs> that's quite a milestone. Um, the build tool chain changes arrived in parent pom 4.52. So now we have to use a Jenkins 2.361.x.4 when I'm talking uh, to that the minimum version we, we need to use in order to use the parent pom. And Mark, Jean-Marc, and I are trying uh, these days on a set of plugins uh, to upgrade them and see what's happening. And it's mostly going fine. <laughs> Mark, uh, do you have anything to share about that? So we love that Basil Crow created a build tool change, build tool chain changes blog changes, post yeah. posted yesterday. Um, nice popularity on the tweet that sent it was sent that mentions it uh and a uh and a, a, some nice feedback in the jenkins developer list related to it with good involvement from people thanks to an article that john mark mason posted on community.jenkins.io on his experience so it feels like yes we're progressing and yes we're alerting people that the Java 11 transition is is a multi-step transition, right? Jenkins Core has now supported, has now required Java 11 for multiple months. Um, now it's transition, next transition is plugins start making the transition to require Java 11. And that means they have to be based on the version of Jenkins that also requires Java 11. So 
And now I, a secret to share with the both of you, the Git plugin and the Git client plugin are both in progress of evaluating their transition to require Java 11. And as part of that, the Git client plugin has to make a change in its major version of JGit. So yeah. whereas it was using JGit 5 previously, it will now be using JGit 6. And, and therefore, there's some, some healthy concern there to be sure that there are no surprises in that transition. Yes, and several other plugins also had, we had discoveries with them regarding, for example, the Jetty version, which has to be changed, or various dependencies, which have to update in order to be compatible with Java 11. But Correct. for a lot of them, it's just painless goes pretty pretty well for some of them it's not the same stories but most of the time it's because uh, the plugins were vastly outdated so that's why mm -hmm. it's a problem but anyhow the blog post is really informative well written and i used it yesterday night and it worked for one of the plugins so yeah that's fantastic um team work now um Yes, we have a story of WMI Windows Agent plugin and implied dependencies. To say the truth, I had some trouble getting rid of the WMI Windows Agent plugin, but Damien cleared uh, the path for me. Uh, it was just because I was using Docker with JCASC. And so that's not always easy, but you should get rid of that uh, pretty soon. So, um, so Marie. If you can open that implied dependencies sheet that's in the third, yeah, that one, just this one, the reason I, I wanted you to open it is to show that there are, this is a, a, a report, and if you if you were to count the total rows, it's it's 100 or more, if I remember right. Yeah, so so there are many plugins that have have an implied dependency on WMI Windows Agent. However, jump back to the top, you'll see that none of them have more than 10,000 installations. Mm -hmm. And in a, in a world with 300,000 controllers, this is a small installation count. Okay, and in the old world where I was doing commercial software, we ached for 10,000 installations of anything. But this is <laughs> Jenkins and 300,000 is the number. So, 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 but what, what I hope to do here is steadily work through this list to ease the pain for some some users that may be dependent on some of these plugins and really dependent on them, not just uninstall them. For instance, row three backup, you should not depend on it. That plugin is so old and so useless, yeah. you should just uninstall it. And so I'm not going to actually worry about releasing a new version of it. Um, others though, the SBT plugin, that one I think is easy to live without, but port allocator, for instance, row 10, it's yeah. it's a that's a very interesting and useful capability for a certain class of users and so that one i will probably get to it eventually and release a new version of it oh fantastic in fact i'm using it uh when i try right. to update the gitlab plugin i think that's the one which is used by the gitlab plugin so and well, i was amazed when i saw it was so old in fact well i think what you'll see is that the actual consumer in your world is the android one of the android emulator plugins relies on port allocator and and that makes sense because because android emulator needs to get a port to communicate yep. so so just just be aware that this thing is is just going to get some steady progress uh there will be some where they just won't be fixed uh or yep. where where someone else could do it anyone could help with this effort it's an easy effort. I'm just following the tutorial on improve a plugin and doing a fraction of it and then releasing a version. Got you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, anything else you would like me to click on? <laughs> no, no, that, that covered it. No, but I think the issue you had with the uninstallation of the plugin in your case could yeah. be worth adding a, a sentence on the readme. I saw we are uh, we had the. Uh, proposal contribution for updating it by a contributor yesterday. A contributor oh. proposed a documentation update of the repository readme, which helped to fix a lot of issues. 
uh, showing a Docker Compose example uh, on the Do Jenkins CI slash Docker image. I think removing a plugin is worth adding a few sentences. Oh. Yeah, because I see. So it, yep, sorry. Go ahead. Go Mark. ahead, Damien. Go ahead. Um, it's only because there are a lot of confusion between the plugins that you embed on user share Jenkins ref, which is inside the image and added through the plugins txt and Jenkins plugin CLI, and the plugins that you have on the Jenkins data home, which is a different lifecycle than your images. There is, there is no way we should change that behavior, but helping connecting the dots for people uh, will, because when I told uh, you, Bruno, you said, oh yeah, that makes sense. So if we can do the same in a written manner, for sure that would help. So if anyone is interested, and I think we could ask the contributor if they are interested on sending another pull request, then we could drive that person to showcase the example. They show, oh, I want to remove the Windows plugin, then I do this, 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 etc. Right, You're right. And, and I got confused, uh, stupidly, by the icon. <laughs> No I, I thought I would see um, a trash can or something, and I think it was a wrong something. No. That was... Yeah, well, I thought there was also a problem in that domain with, I think, Damien, you mentioned it, of multiple directories. I, I operate in one directory, but Jenkins uses another, and the plugins get copied from one to another in the container startup process. So that's a, that's a, that's a healthy thing for controller maintenance, but deletion becomes extra complexity then. Exactly. It's easier to update and add. It's really easy and makes out of the box, but makes the deletion a bit more complicated. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't mind opening an issue and mentioning the contributor and you, Bruno, if it's okay for you. Yeah, of course. I will describe the pointers. Even if it's only the contributor copy and pasting, I think given that person is highly motivated to help on the documentation, I really want them to continue in that area because they are, seems to understand clearly that documentation is also first class citizens. Great. Thank you, Damien. Uh, now, it, you again. <laughs> Java 17 supporting. I know uh, Basil does an awful lot of work regarding GDK 17 support in Jenkins, but Jenkins Infra was supposed to do something in December, but we already, it's the 16th of December, so I think yep. it may happen in January and not in December. You have to um, watch for the Christmas tree. That's the only uh, thing I can <laughs> say on that topic. <laughs> okay, no promise, but you never know. Secret. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you never know, but you have so many other things to take care of. That's perfectly normal. And oh, so JDK 19 now support in Jenkins. So it has been installed by Stefan on CI. And there has been an interesting and very live discussion on the mailing list about Edge and future LTS version. Because of course, JDK 19 is not an LTS version. It will live for some months and then it will disappear um, because Java, where will it be, by the way, the LTS, the 20 or the 21? The 20, I guess, it's 20, only 21. the- 21, I was wrong. I thought it was only for the odd uh, versions. Anyhow, so um, it's not fixed. Uh, we don't know yet what we're gonna do. Uh, I think it's still in discussion, am I right? So the infrastructure is going to write down a proposal of end of life and support of the GDK proposed on the infrastructure. Uh, as I understand, the latest uh, consensus is we support all the LTS GDK uh, until Jenkins core drop the support. So right now GDK 8 is still on Jenkins core and one day uh, development with there will be a discussion to say we drop it for everyone and then we move it for the non LTS it's the first time we will support it until it's end of life plus one month by support we mean it's on the platform and it's installed with the latest available version that's the limit of the support uh, the second point is we can uh, we are thinking about providing a way for developer to say hey uh, I want to build my plugin 
uh, on the edge, which means next to the two standard platform that you show on the Basil blog post as for today, like Linux 17 and Windows 11, Even. then that will add a third platform that will be Linux with the latest GDK that will be 19. And then when it will be 20, it will be 20. Um, by default, failing that age won't fail your build, only the stage on the platform. So you have a way to to know my plugin doesn't work as expected or work as expected with that platform. That will that will be the default. And then the infrastructure and our op automatic updates will take care of, of saying, okay, the age is 19, it will be 20 in January, et cetera, until the new LTS is available. So that's a kind of common ground to fit every interlocutor of the conversation. Maybe we will have to change that support policy, but uh, I mean, we provide the tool and then people decide to use them or not. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. Uh, we will be on the edge of the JDK world and that's pretty cool because we used to work with an aging version of Java. So yeah, um, so much has been done this year. It's amazing. Um, yeah, what a great community. Mark, anything but, to say? Yeah, go ahead, Dimin. But you have to know that right now, if you want to use GDK19, just define you GDK19 can. like you yeah, would do as with simple as that. 17. It just works. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead, Mark. That's there's still lots to do for Java. Of course. And, and certainly the Jenkins project I don't expect will actually ever support JDK19 officially in the sense of you're allowed to run the controller on it. Uh, because JDK19 has a very short life, right? It will live for yep. what, maybe six months or 12 months total, and then it's replaced by 20, then replaced by 21. And we just don't have the capacity to support those kind of things officially. But we, we, we certainly want to use them to prepare for the eventual JDK LTS. I think you said probably 21, right? Have they've already selected yep. that 21 will be the base, will the next LTS? I, yeah, I think so. I saw that, but I'm not totally sure. But next LTS will be installed as soon as it will be available. Great. Great. I think we've done, uh, we're done with the agenda. I just wanted to add a small thing. Um, you know, uh, it's Christmas time almost, and I love to give gifts. And I also like to give gifts that nobody asked for, <laughs> you know, like like the ugly sweater, Christmas sweater your uncle brought you last Christmas, for example. And what I wanted to offer the community was uh, the first test with a risk five uh, for a Jenkins agent. So I tested, I just put some glue here and there, and we now have a first risk five agent working on Linux and it's working on my machine, I have a job working, and I'm pretty happy about that. Um, that's cool. That's nothing, but that's cool nonetheless. Nonetheless, and it's just this little machine. I don't see myself, so I don't know if you can see it, but yes, it's that little pink machine that does work for me. And I do hope to do more with Risk Five in the coming years. That was my gift. Nobody asked for. Okay, so. <laughs> so so if we're if we're giving gifts, I have to give my gift. I Go have ahead. a Windows. I've I've got a Windows on ARM sixty four computer that I've I'm going to be using, and oh, yeah. it will be an agent for me running Windows as part of my cluster. So so I've I've got an ARM sixty four Windows, and intend to do again over the holidays some experimenting with it. But it looks very promising. It runs quite well. It's reasonably quick. Okay, it's not an M1, but it's reasonably quick and, and whatnot. It's the famous Volterra, am I right? It, it is. It is Project Volterra. Very good. Super cool. And you won't convert it to Linux. You will keep Windows <laughs> on this machine. I, I would. Well, actually, they offer a way to boot other operating systems, and I might. But but right now, I'm, I'm much more interested in Windows on ARM64 than I am in Linux on ARM64 because we've been doing Linux on ARM64 yeah. for, 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 for what, multiple years, right? <laughs> so, but, okay. Yeah, that's fantastic. Damien, you can start to scratch your head and say, no, 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 no Windows on ARM64 for drinking. Yes, this will happen. Thank you a lot, so, Mark. 
<laughs> no, you, you are trying me, but you have to know that that nice desktop station is initially with Windows for gaming, but it's also Akintosh because I'm using Akintosh since a decade. So if you see where I'm going, <laughs> my OS work on IRM, could it be possible to run it? Um, so the answer is I already tried and it doesn't work very well, <laughs> but I can boot on the single user mode uh, on an IRM machine. But yeah, don't try me on that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> we are still little boys, the three of us. That's cool. Exactly. I love it. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Uh, do you have anything to add? No meeting in two weeks. Oh, right. We, you've already oh. got it there. Yeah. It's, no, no. It's I didn't on the say meeting that. notes. It was just written. Yes, we're not meeting. So the next time we'll, we'll meet will be in the new year. 2023 got you thanks a lot happy holidays everyone. everyone thanks a lot for your time thanks for coming the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours and see you at the beginning of next year bye-bye bye-bye <laughs>